All right, so now we're going to stretch or board that, that big beaver that we just fleshed out. So the hide's still a little bit damp, so I'm gonna put down some, uh, some newspapers. I know a lot of guys use the templates on their boards. Um, I never have. And uh, if it works for you, fine. But uh, I don't think it's necessary. I think it's a lot of extra work and try to figure out just how to get it right within that template. Plus, if it's a little wet, you know, like I said, you lay down the, uh, some newspaper, it seems to work good. Some people also try to lift up the hide around the edges, and uh, there's, there's some problems with that if you haven't tried it. And it just, it's a lot of extra work. So for me, throw down a couple newspaper. And then uh, grab the hide we just fleshed. So again, like fleshing, you know, I try to do it the same way every time, whether I'm stretching a, you know, boarding a little tiny beaver or a big one, I just do it the same every time. And I use, I have different sizes of plywood. Uh, I started out with a three quarter inch, but then that's actually pretty heavy. So I went down to some, some smaller half inch stuff here. And uh, if you take a four by eight sheet of plywood, you can cut it into three pieces at, you know, 32 inches wide, which is fine for most beaver. But uh, this guy here is probably going to stretch out right at 30, 33 or so. So it would, you know, be a little narrow if you use that 32 inch board. But uh, anyway, so I always start with the head up here towards the top and get it kind of... Uh, centered got my little bucket of nails here and i know some guys use staples that's fine um, seems like a little bit more work pulling those out but, uh, for me i just use these little whatever they are inch and a inch and a half inch nails and uh so i start right up here in the top of the nose and then i get an estimate of about what it's going to stretch out to you and uh, this it takes a little practice so you, you don't want to pull it down too far and you don't you know you just got to kind of pull the sides out and then just tug on it to, uh, not, not too tight not too loose like I said it's like fleshing it just takes a little practice the good thing is if I get it a little bit too short or too long I can I can make some adjustments but right here, these first four nails, I don't want to, I don't want to do too tight. You don't want to start off stretching too tight. You want to have a little bit of slack here in the middle. Like I said, if I'm a little bit off, I can adjust later. And the guys who use the templates are like, well, dumbass, if you just have a template, you don't have to be uh, second guessing. But then I would have to draw templates on you know, 20 pieces of plywood on both sides because I use both sides of the plywood. And again, I'm just pulling it a little bit snug, not too tight. And I get these first eight nails in, and that's going to pretty much establish my my pattern, my shape. I want kind of an an oval shape we're going to end up with. I don't know what the exact percentage of the numbers, but probably uh, I normally have to see. I'm going to pull this guy up here just a little bit more. I have the length usually a few inches longer than the width. Right, so I got those first eight nails in, and now I'm going to trim off about an inch or so on these front legs. Got my uh, VTAC Patriot knife. It's pretty handy for skinning as well. And then we're gonna trim off these lips here. You don't wanna leave those on the uh, hide. I, I guess you can, but you know, there's no need, there's no commercial value in that. And uh, it makes for a little neater appearance. There's a lot of meat and stuff there in, the, in those, those lips. So. Just trim that off. And 
And then I also trim off down here by the uh, where the vent was. The skin is very uh, thin right there. So if you try to put a nail in there, it's just going to rip right through. So again, we're just giving for a neater appearance and trimming off this unnecessary skin. If you left a little piece of cartilage here or gristle, you can, uh, in your flushing process, you can trim that off at this time. And if you left any hunks of meat around the, the hind legs, because sometimes they're tough to, when you're flushing, get all that out there. You can trim that off there. So now I just go around and I, I split the difference between these two nails. And I do that all the way around. Halfway between these two nails. And like I said, I'm only using half inch plywood, so I'm not pounding so hard that the nail's going all the way through. So I put the nail about anywhere between an eighth and a quarter inch from the edge. I tap it to get it through the skin. And then I can pull it out. I'm not pulling as tight as I can. I'm just pulling it until uh, it's snug, getting the, the loose slack out of there. All right, so now we have, should be 16 nails. So now I'm going to go back around the other way. Again, splitting the, uh, the difference between the nails. So every place there's uh, two nails, I'll just put one in between there. So we're back around on the nose, so I'm not counting, but the mass should say there's about uh, 32 nails in there so far. So now I'm going to split the difference again. So if this was a bigger beaver, I would put two nails in between uh, each of these because you really don't want to have more than, you never want to have more than a two inch space between the nails. Some people say one inch, but uh, I think anywhere between one and two is fine. Uh, if you're going less than an inch, then that's just extra work. If you're going more than two inches, then you're gonna have just too much of a gap here and you won't have that, that nice uniform appearance. It'll dip in. You can see how it bows in there. You wanna have that more of a straight line. And plus, if you have too much of a gap and one of the nails pulls out, because as it stretches, it's gonna shrink a little bit. So if the nail was not pounded in all the way, or it rips through the, the skin or the nail comes out, now that hide's gonna pull in, you're gonna have a big uh, curve there which is gonna look like crap. So you want the fur to look good, right? So with this one here, if I split the difference, it's gonna be right at about an inch and a half, inch and three quarter between the nails, which for me, um, in my opinion, that is that's, that's okay. If this guy was a little bigger, like I said, I'd put two nails in between each of these. But, uh, I thought it was bigger. I thought this might not even be a 2X. I don't know. We'll measure them when we're done here and find out. But 
it looks like a 32 by 35. So when you're measuring beaver, um, you measure the width plus the length, and you add those two together. Um, so like I said, I'm guessing this is 32 by 35, so that would be 67. So that's just my guess. We'll confirm with a tape measure, but uh, to be a large needs to be 55 inches, extra large needs to be 60 inches, uh, 2XL needs to be 65, and then a 3XL, which some old guys refer to as a blanket or a super blanket, that needs to be, a, I think, either over 70 or or 72 inches. But it depends, uh, you know, who you're, who you're selling to different. Different auctions and buyers have different scales of grading sizes, but most people go with seven or eight different sizes of beaver. And you can see there was a wider space here, so I am putting two nails in between instead of just the one, just so I don't have that, like I said, more than a, about an inch and three quarter or two inch gap. So in addition to seven or eight different sizes of beaver, when they grade them, there's, they put them in two major categories first, which is Eastern and Western. All of our beaver here in Wisconsin are considered Eastern beaver. The dividing line is probably geographically somewhere around Minnesota. Um, and the Eastern beaver are, are better. They're better quality. They're generally darker in color. The hair is smoother and silkier, whereas the Western beaver are lighter color. Some of them are extremely blonde or, or pale color. And uh, the fur is a little bit wiry or rough. Okay, so now we have our 64, actually about 70 nails in so far. So we're, we're done with that. We're going to close up these uh, the four leg holes now. And uh, I was told it's better to pull from the inside towards the outside, as opposed to I'm not going to close it from the outside towards the middle. So you want to always have at least two nails in here in case one of them pops out and the, your, your leg hole will open back up. So I'm not, uh, I'm not worried about Closing it completely. If there's a little gap, you know, I'm not like going to sew it shut or anything. This is just for appearance. Because once the, uh, once this gets bought, one of the first things that they do before they, I think before they even can them is they just, they have a machine that just punches out the leg hole. So that area is going to be gone anyways. And then the hind leg. So there might still be a little bit of fat around here which is fine, but it's important to not overlap at all. So never overlap the, the skin. Just pull it close, just like uh, you're closing an eyelid here. So just, just pull it till it touches like that, but don't, don't overlap it um, or that will, it will rot. Don't ask how I know that. So we're just closing the nose up, and we got this last one here. And uh, pick up what's left of my nails. So this this guy here took about probably about 80 nails. I've had some really big ones, you know, some 76 to 80 inch ones that you know I might end up using 100 nails on those. Well, it's small, I might only use 60 nails, 65, something like that, if you're if you're counting. Yeah. So this is the finished product here. So it might not be exactly perfectly oval, and some guy who uses his template and his staple gun and everything. Uh, but you know what? At the uh, at the auction, mine's going to get just as much. Um, 
I'm sending the fur harvesters now since NAFA went out of business, but when I was shipping to NAFA a couple years ago, uh, I did get a top lot award for beaver. So um, I'm not saying that I do it perfect, but you know, at least at least one of my beaver got a got a top lot award. So that's all for now.